Hi, I'm Jackie Flavin, Customer Insights Leader with Demco, and this is Open Book, our weekly conversation series with industry experts about how they're navigating COVID-19 challenges. And today I'm joined by Stephen Gower. Uh, Stephen is Demco's lead designer, um, and I'm going to guess that he's probably designed hundreds of libraries and learning spaces over his time with Demco. Um, his designs are beautiful and they really capture um, what students and, and educators and, and librarians and patrons need most. So I am so grateful that he's here um, with us today. And we're gonna walk through um, a, a design that Stephen recently put together. Uh, it's a socially distanced library concept. Um, but before we get into that, I just wanna ask, I'm so curious, from your perspective as a designer, um, how, how does it feel to have this social distancing you know, um, mandate sort of thrown your way? Is it, is it like a big pivot or does it feel like something that is not so hard to integrate into what you do? I think it's, I think it's a pivot. Um, you know, the design tools that we use uh, are the same. The design process is the same, uh, but the goals are, are different. And that, I think that's the big, the big difference is with the spaces that we're designing, uh, the goals, at least the short-term goals, um, in response to this uh, COVID is, is different. Hopefully, longer term, the spaces can, can move back to being more the spaces that we, that we know um, and uh, function as we've been seeing before, before COVID came through. But I think, I think the goals of the spaces that we're designing to address COVID are different. So it, it, it does feel like a pivot. Um, but the, the tools and the design process and our approach is the same, but the goals that we're trying to achieve are, are different and, and quite unique. Yeah. What do you feel like you're giving up in order to um, accommodate social distancing? I think um, the collaborative dynamics that we've all been focusing on, you know, how public libraries are used by their community to help with um, community spaces that the community can use for community meetings, for group collaboration, um, that, that, that's different. It's more of a digital collaboration uh, in a sense. And so those free form uh, collaborative dynamics in terms of being able to move around furniture, reconfigure furniture to support group collaboration and face-to-face -face collaboration real time, that's, that's, a, that's a pivot. Yeah. Um, and I think um, another pivot is uh, efficient use of space. Mm. The, the, just the nature of having to space out the six foot distancing. Um, you're, you are losing the efficient use of space. Um, but again, these are hopefully all short term uh, focuses um, and longer term when we get back to a, uh, um, you know, a standard um, these spaces will become used in a, in a more efficient way. And I would say as we're designing these spaces to address COVID, we're always bear, bearing that in mind that these spaces are gonna pivot back. And so they need to function for the future as well as addressing the goals, um, the COVID specific goals right now. So we're always thinking about that is how do they, how do they address COVID requirements, CDC guidelines currently, but how can they easily adjust back to be more of a the spaces that we that we've been designing and that we know before before COVID came through. Yeah it's uh, in some ways it's nice that you know flexibility and mobility have been trends for a while because that lends itself really well to you know um, all the versatility that's required required now so yeah exactly. yeah hopefully there's there's a um, there's a nice sort of setup there. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's start. Let's look at your design. Um, so okay. I, w I would love for you to walk us through and maybe we can go just area by area. Um, yeah. And I should share with our with our um, viewers here that the, this design is really inspirational and it's really meant to spark ideas for people. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll go through it. But um, this is really sort of a, a, um, a beautiful model. And, and we hope that people can can see um, various elements of this in their own space as well. Okay, so so this is the um, the overall plan. Do you want? Is there, you know, what should we focus on here? What should we look at? 
Yes, this is a plan view. So it's a it's a library space, a library that we created. So we created the architecture as well to support this uh, conceptual design. Um, and at the top right hand corner, just to give you orientation to the space, you've got the vestibule and then you walk through into the uh, the entrance area uh, where there's a circulation desk there to the left. And then moving down into the overall space, you have the basically the core of the library, which we got broken broken into different zones, and we have three D views of those the, 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 those zones that we'll be that we'll be sharing. Bottom left hand corner is the teen area. Then in the centre we have the community room. The bottom right hand area is a children's area. So that gives you kind of an overall view awesome. of, the, of the space. Yeah. Do you want me to move to, to the rendering pictures? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. I just think it's so awesome that you guys can do this. It looks so, uh, like, I mean, I could swear it's a photo, but this is a, a 3D rendering, correct? It's a 3D rendering, yep. We use Revit, um, which is a, a really powerful 3D tool. So all the spaces we design are in, uh, in three dimensions. So we build the buildings, we build different library spaces. And then the uh, furniture solutions that we propose, they're all 3D uh, CAD models that we drop into the space and we're able to move them around. So as designers, this is a great tool as well because you're able to uh, see your 3D concept real time as you're designing it and move, move furniture around real time. It really helps the designers really prove out what they're imagining. Um, in terms of their creative process, but you're able to see the results of it real time in 3D. Right. Yeah, so this is a view of the, uh, shows the core of the library space. Um, and the, the, the main focus of this view is um, one, -way, one way traffic systems. So how to introduce one way traffic systems into your library. That makes sense for your library space because every library is unique every space is unique and so just considering your library and what one way one way traffic routes would make sense and then how you represent those traffic routes right whether it's floor decals uh, signage and then also uh, using um, existing furniture um, and how you lay that out to help promote those one-way traffic routes so whether it's high, here we're showing screening, mobile screening, but whatever you have available, it could be mobile shelving, uh, it could be tables, or it could just be floor decals and signage, but whatever works for your space to make it clear what, would it, what these one-way traffic routes would be. And one-way traffic routes are essentially around maintaining that six-foot distancing. So you don't have two, uh, two flows of traffic within what is typically in, in public libraries a three foot minimum aisle. Um, so if you are working on a three foot minimum aisle, you definitely want to consider a, a one way traffic route. And that's what we're trying to illustrate here. And it's about maintaining that six foot distancing. Right. So you're not having uh, patrons pass each other basically. Right. Well, and, I, look, and I have seen, been seeing this in, in uh, retail. So I'm hopefully people are getting used to this sort of this one way um, traffic flow. Yeah, exactly. That's great. And I love that you still, there's still um, great, you know, options for people to sit down and work um, and they're not facing anyone else, which is great. Yeah. Um, this is, this is wonderful. Do you want me to move to the next one? Here? Yeah. Look at great. this. Yeah. Is this is another part of the library and what we're illustrating here. And again, this is following the CDC guidelines is uh, six foot uh, distancing. Um, between patrons, having patrons uh, face away from each other, if possible, mm -hmm. um, and then adding vertical screening uh, between patrons, which we're doing here with these mobile, mobile Morco whiteboards. Um, and then also, if possible, adding the acrylic uh, sneeze guards um, at the front of the table as well. So here we're really combining all those different elements, patrons facing away from each other, six foot distancing but also screening to left and right and in front of as well so you're creating a you know a very uh focused space for a, a patron to sit in and work at and they have this screening um uh, around them um mm -hmm. 
We're also showing uh, mobile power. So we have these uh, Muso power balls, which are the white, the white poles with the sphere at the top, which allow laptops to plug in. So it's around uh, making use of that mobile power. And what that does, it, it, it reinforces or it helps patrons space apart. Right. They're not all yeah. congregating around one PowerPoint. Right, because that's usually how it is. Everyone's gathered around the one outlet, right? And whether it's the airport or the library or the Starbucks. Um, so that's, I, I can see a lot of people needing um, some more mobile power solutions. Yeah. And everything here looks super mobile. I mean, you could, the you know, the table, the, the whiteboards, and, you know, you can move those easily. Um, and then the chairs look lightweight enough where you could pick those up and move them around as needed. Yeah, exactly. And that's the great thing about the collaborative um, focus, the mobile focus, the easy reconfiguration, the spaces that we've been designing for a number of years that have had this uh, part of dynamic as part of the solutions that we've been designing. That's there now and it, it helps this. It helps you reconfigure and move around um, to achieve these COVID specific layouts you're able to do that with everything that we've been designing to date. So that's, a, that's kind of an inherent functionality that exists. And so a lot of the spaces and a lot of the libraries are able to reconfigure what they have easily because they've been moving to this collaborative, mobile, flexible model for a number of years now. Right. I wonder if people could start using the acrylic shields as like whiteboards too. Like you could yeah, probably write so. on that with a dry erase. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, yeah, I think that's a nice feature and everything that we're showing here is wipeable, it's cleanable. Yeah. And it can be used for, for writing on as well. Yeah. The cleaning protocols are just so intense. I, I really, I mean, I, I, the librarians we've been talking to have just been saying that it's overwhelming how often they have to clean. So anything that makes it easier, that's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so these table surfaces, so laminate is a, a great durable surface as opposed to a veneer. So we always recommend laminate table surfaces and those laminates are great surfaces for being able to clean easily, um, being uh, able to be resistant or work with those you know, antibacterial wipes. Um, if you can find antibacterial wipes out there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great. This is a nice private space within, within the library. Yeah. And so this is a, a trend, uh, you know, spaces within spaces or private spaces. That's a trend that's been part of public library design for a number of years. And so that's an example, I think, of how some of these trends are there and able to work with the requirements of, uh, you know, COVID and CDC guidelines. So these micro spaces and these spaces within spaces, they work really well. And when we design public libraries, we're, we're, we're always looking to, interspersed seating and private spaces within the high level stacks or within lower level mobile stacks. Um, and that creates a really interesting free flowing dynamic within a public library. It helps traffic move through collections. It helps promote um, use and visibility to the collection. Um, and that trend and that dynamic works really well with these COVID requirements of having these spaces that are screened and that people can sit within outside of traffic use, but they have their own their own screens that we're looking at here around them. These these micro zones that they can mm -hmm. they can work at by themselves, which is something that suits these COVID requirements really well. Right. Um, I also just noticed that the books on the shelf. Um, like have like little titles and stuff. And I'm wondering, is that something you were able to program or is, are those just sort of like the, the stock photo book thing? There we have a model, uh, little collections of books that we drop on to each shelf and it helps, it helps add realism, makes <laughs> the space a little bit warmer. That's so uh, yeah, you're probably seeing some of the titles are, some of them are the same. We try and mix it up a little bit. <laughs> this book has the same 20 books. So this library has the same 20 books over and over. Right. That's funny. Oh, this is great too. Yeah, is this more? Is this the kids' area more? More so? This is the view, the same view that we were looking at maybe two slides oh, okay. ago, but looking at back it from the other way. So this is still yeah. the main library area, still the adult area, if you like. Okay. Um, but looking at it back the other way. Yeah. And the lower, I, I like the lower shelves in the back there. Those yes. give you nice sight lines. Yeah. 
This is great. Yeah. I mean, this almost like, if you, you know, the arrows do make it feel like we're living in a different era, but other than that, it's like, a, it's, it doesn't feel so different than what it might have been in the past. Yeah. Right. Um, and we tried to do that with this design. We tried to, um, you know, keep vibrancy and keep it an engaging space. That's part of the challenge. I think when we're designing these spaces is you, you, it's a balance. You, you, we've got the COVID guidelines. We know what they are, but we also have the creative design process. And that's still part of this. When you're trying to lay these spaces out, you still want them to be as much as possible engaging spaces or interesting spaces to be. And that's the balance. And I think that's the challenge we all face right now is trying to keep these spaces interesting and vibrant, uh, promote collaboration where possible, um, you know, and still building that in, but within the, within the COVID guidelines that we'll, you know, we're all working to right now. Yeah. This, this, this specific view, we wanted to show that if you have high level shelving, um, high level shelving it by its nature, it's challenging for sight lines. It's challenging to see if there's another patron in the aisles. And so um, if you have high level shelving that's on 36 inch um, aisles, which a lot of public libraries are running on that, that's the ADA guideline minimum. If you pull a 36 inch section out, which we're showing in the center here, it helps a little bit with this, you know, this traffic flow. It can be a little bit more fluid. So maybe if you're not, if you have a, if you're facing another patron coming the other way, you know, you might decide to sort of squeeze by each other. You know, what what layouts can you do that could help minimize that? Right. And that's what we're trying to do here. Pull out a high level section if possible. If it's possible, then it allows just a little bit more of a free form, free flowing traffic route where patrons can, you know, avoid each other um, as they're browsing the collection. And that was the rationale here. Yeah. In Minnesota, that's called like an oop moment because everyone bumps into each other and goes, oop. <laughs> right. right. Oh, this is great. This is the circ desk. I like this. Yeah. So um, this is the Demco mobile modular circulation desk. We, we included that in this design because it's each piece is mobile and reconfigurable. So um, typically circulation desks are fixed and static, but we, we have some proprietary solutions which are mobile and that allows libraries to adjust their layouts real time. Um, and that can be useful um, if you need to adjust your design to suit COVID and what, and what that means is, you know, we've got these floor decals which are promoting six foot spacing. So, do you, is your layout, is your, does your library suit six foot spacings in front of the circulation desk in correlation right. to the entrance? Because a lot of, some of the time it, that, that would be difficult to achieve. And so right. being able to adjust your desk, um, if possible, as part of trying to figure out what that would be, helps. Um, as you know, these floor decals, so they're on six foot spacings, maybe tensor barriers, or some existing furniture that you have, tables or, or display that you can arrange around the entrance to help promote this uh, more of a you know, socially distanced uh, queuing um, in front of the circulation desk. And that's what we're trying to show here. We also have the higher level acrylic screens, but with the, with the slot at the base, which can help with, uh, you know, transfer of items or books or um, interactions with the librarian, but still having the librarian and the patron uh, having this acrylic screen between them. And then we're also showing on the left-hand side of this desk, the book return. You can just see it, it has a slot in the top, but positioning that book return in a way that suits the one-way traffic route. Uh, so it's not in conflict with the six foot spacings, um, of the people waiting at the desk. Uh, so you're not having to have like cross traffic flow, if you like. And that's what we're trying to show with this, with this three dimensional view. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this has got to be such an area of concern for people because it's so high traffic and it's so important to keep the library staff safe. Right. And so yes. the people at the front desk are going to be interacting with probably the most patrons. Right. And you know, they're just, it's just a, such a high traffic area. So I, this, this really does feel like it protects them um, 
you know, it feels a bit like a fortress, but also very accessible. Yeah, exactly. That's great. So this is the view directly. Uh, so we were looking at the circulation desk. This is the view of a patron basically as they come into the library. And that's so we had the children's area uh, uh, at the back of this space. But this specific view, what we're showing is the, uh, again, the promotion of a one-way traffic system. And we're also uh, emphasizing the value of mobile shelving. And mobile shelving by its nature is lower. Uh, and lower shelving, it helps with sight lines and it also helps patrons in a way uh, you know plan their route or they can see where other patrons are so if they're browsing a collection and they're seeing that maybe somebody's at a specific point of the shelving where they want to go they can see that because the shelving is lower so that's the advantage of mobile shelving one you can adjust it to suit these one-way traffic systems um, you could by their nature mobile shelving also defines one-way traffic systems because you're able to position it to promote that. And you can also see where the patrons are. So it allows, it allows for better decision-making if you like, and you can just time and plan your route through the space so that you can maintain that social distancing as much as possible. And that's what we're trying to show here uh, with this specific view. Yeah, I can imagine the children's area will be tough because it's, I mean, kids are so high touch or you can't tell, of, you know, a toddler not to touch everything and um mm. but yet you know it's such a i mean the children's areas so, i mean i bring my kids to the library all the time and it's such a loss to not have that that option so um I, i've heard, been hearing a lot of people are, are handling it differently and of course the guidelines are changing all the time yeah. um but this seems like really manageable for um for library staff they can see they, it's not too crowded. Um, they could probably, you know, easily manage a small number of people in this area. Right, right, exactly. Well, this is nice. This seems like a place for more people together, like a, a larger group. Yeah, so exactly. So this is, this is a, a, you know, it's a lounge area. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a comfortable seating area. Um, but in this view, we're showing how you can add or use the screen, any vertical screening that you have uh, to help um, define lounge areas as their own space and separating them from any traffic routes. And that's what we're showing on the right hand side with these mobile cheese wall screens um, with, with, the, with the holes that are saying there. That's helping to define the traffic route to the right of those screens. We're also adding these smaller zoomer screens, these gray screens um, in between the lounge. So you're also, you're building in that screening between the users. But at the same time, we were able to, you know, orientate this lounge. So it still has that feeling of collaboration and warmth. It's still its own defined zone. Um, it's still a little bit of a warmer space to be, uh, more of an engaging space to be as opposed to having a very linear, six foot spacing so again we're trying to we're trying to maintain the um, a vibrancy to these spaces while still creating spaces that respond to the needs of this covid uh, pandemic that we're going through um, we're building in these mobile powerpoints uh, which is what those uh, three prong towers are those are mobile powerpoints that have uh, plugins down the sides so multiple patrons can plug their laptops in and then we also have these um, Dart mobile tables that we're using in conjunction with the lounge. So you're able to make these basically soft seating um, work, work points for single users that allows the people to sit for a long time with their laptop and have a, um, a place that's comfortable to sit for a long time. And these specific lounge pieces, they have an integrated high back which is great. So any lounge that you have that maybe has a high back, that can act as integrated screening. It helps to find traffic routes around the back of that lounge as well. So we're trying to, we're trying to make furniture either that the libraries have, trying to show ways of how that furniture can be used to, to achieve multiple things. I love it. And I really like those, um, those partitions. They, they're like small enough where you can still talk to the person to your side, but also they remind you there is a, a bit of a boundary here. So you're not gonna 
you're not going to get too close. It's like a nice subtle reminder to stay apart, but you're also still in the same space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this view, um, similar to the one we were looking at a couple of slides ago, but it's, it's, it's highlighting the one-way traffic system and the, the value that mobile shelving can bring um, or static shelving if you have it and it, it's positioned in a way to promote a, a strong aisle and a, a, and a, a, you know, a dedicated one-way traffic system. And that's what we're trying to show here. In this case, it's mobile shelving that's orientated and positioned to help define this one-way traffic route. Um, in this in this case, this one-way traffic route is the main the main route out of the library. So we had the traffic route that patrons went in by the desk. Your feet, you're, you're allowing patrons to travel through the the library space as a whole, uh, but then having a very dedicated route out of the space as well. And that's what we're trying to show here. There's so many. There are so many wonderful places for people to work individually in this library, this is really great. Yeah, this is, um, so here we're trying to, to promote that, yeah, individual places where people can sit and work. Um, here we're saying if there's space around the perimeter that you can use to uh, have a single user station, then do that because the users, you know, they're facing away from the aisle, which is, which is, a, which is a good um, CDC guideline that we're following there. Um, having the workstation on the perimeter typically means it's easier access to power. Mm -hmm. um, and um, by its nature, you're not facing another person. You're not facing a user, you're, you're facing into your own space. And so um, using that, there's three good reasons there why having a workstation around the perimeter makes sense at this specific point in time. And it, and it makes sense with all the design trends that we've that we're seeing independent of what we're trying to do around these, these COVID guidelines, um, which just has, some, has a lot of good uh, parallels. It almost seems like if you're crafty, you could make some of your lower level shelving into these types of desks. These are, I, would you call these more of a desk or a table? Uh, it's a kind of a hybrid. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a slightly higher level workstation. What we're showing here, it's the reef product so these, these this is a stool so it sits a little bit higher um, you know we do that just to give patrons choice patron mm -hmm. choice different ways to sit and work throughout a library space um, but yeah you're right Jackie I think I think there's some shelving units that can be used to have standing height use um, and just just imagining what you have in your library right now and how it can be used in different ways to help to help us achieve these you know, these CDC goals. Yeah. So this is the children's space, uh, which is a great space in this library. Um, so we have this full height glazing. Um, in this view, we're showing the Colorscape shelving, um, which is a, a great product for bringing color and vibrancy into a children's area. What, and one of the features of that product is you, we have this wave shelving, but it's single-sided and it's mobile. Um, and it has a lot of um, strengths in terms of it being able to achieve this uh, single-sided screening, if you like. So we have the wave, we have the collection on one side of the wave, but on the other side, we have this laminate upright panel that you can have a table up against, uh, which we're showing on one side of this wave, on the other side, we have these upholstered mobile stools. So you, we're able to create these uh, zones, these smaller zones, and still have this screening, but still have a really interesting and fun and vibrant place to sit. And that's what we're trying to show here. Different ways to screen, different ways to divide um, and provide these smaller zones, but still have some fun and create a, a fun place for children to be. Uh, with the wave um, aesthetic and uh, these micro zones all working together as a whole, but still being separate as well, which is one of the one of the challenges that I think as designers and everybody's facing when they're when you're imagining how these spaces can work out is, you know, how do you create the division but still have a feeling of community and as a whole and keeping that interest 
uh, if possible, um, you know, within within the layouts that we're looking to achieve. Yeah, I was just looking at this thinking, gosh, if you, you know, if you had to um, temporarily to shut down your children's area, you could easily just sort of move all of all of the furniture to the side, you know, and and that would be that would maybe take a few minutes. Um, or if you wanted to use this for a staff meeting, that would be pretty easy to do too. I mean, it just looks so easy to to move around. So you really achieved versatility here. Um, and that's of course a great children's area. It's original intended purpose. It's it's wonderful for that too. Great. Yeah. Anything and yes. Uh, anything. Hopefully the mobile. The mobility that exists right now to your point Jackie it just makes the adaption of spaces um, easier yeah and, and be able to adjust it as required so hopefully those mobile solutions that we have out there are able to you know, be used right now to move these spaces around yeah yeah I mean I it's it, I'm hopeful as well that like all the spaces that you've designed in the last several years like they should be able to hopefully right like adjust um, to, to meet the needs of today. Um, right. Thank God, <laughs> right? Yeah, it would be exactly. terrible if the, the trend has been heavy, heavy furniture. <laughs> right. Oh, is this the teen space? Uh, this is the other view of the children's okay. space. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 this is basically just showing a, a, another view. Um, we have the, uh, the lounge, which is, uh, you know, allows for, um, two-seater seating, you know, an adult and a child to sit together and read, but we're showing a high back. So anything that has a high back um, is a good, uh, it helps just to find uh, kind of rear screening, uh, helps, helps uh, promote traffic routes. Uh, the unit that we're seeing at the front here is a, uh, we call them play pods. It's a Colorscape product and play pods. And we have a different, better view in a, a couple of slides on from this, but play pods are, uh, micro zones or zones just for one person and that's a that's a good product for addressing some of the needs right now because it is a it is a, a singular zone um, these these micro zones they have an upholstered interior core that's a vinyl and vinyl or a coated fabric can be easily cleaned so that's another thing to consider and so the, the the play pod this lounge piece and also this rocking piece this uh, indie this is called this indie rocker. We're showing this in a coated fabric, and so coated fabrics that can be cleaned multiple times throughout the day mm. is uh, a good consideration. And again, it's another example of a trend that's been consistent for a number of years, where we've been promoting um, not so much fabrics, but coated fabrics and vinyls because of that durability mm. and that easy clean cleanability. That's right. And then, so this is the teen area, and um, this is really showing, it's really a, a, a combination of everything that we've seen so far in the library. So we have, we have the high back lounge, which helps define a single user space. We're showing it in a um, coated or a vinyl fabric for that easy uh, cleanability and durability. We're making use of the perimeter to create these uh, single user spaces where you're not directly facing another patron. Um, you have easy access to power and um, so all in all you still have a, an interesting space a, a vibrant space but a space that promotes single users but hopefully still has a sense of community and a space that flows as a whole uh, while still allowing these these single defined zones mm -hmm. I like how it's sophisticated too I, I've been hearing that teens don't really want um, the teen space to be kiddish um this right. is very this is very adult like which is nice yeah we we, tr we always try and do that we give teen spaces their own unique aesthetic um we try and place them away from the children's area so they don't feel you know they feel like they have their own zone and we always try and give it a an aesthetic that's that by its nature defines a teen space yeah just just by the products and within that space and how the space is laid out yeah Yes, yeah, so this is uh, here. We're showing um, another high back solution. So this is a muso. The one on the left, it's a muso, uh, a muso product. 
um, and it's, it's mobile. You have this wipeable screen and then you have this uh, laminate desk solution. So this is a, a great product for addressing these current needs because it's, it's a, it's a movable desk and it's a movable desk that is actually has integrated screening. So you're able to move this around. Um, the screening is, is inbuilt into the product itself. That has a lot of plus points for what we're trying to do right now with these singular zones. Um, and again, we're showing the, the, cent the, uh, the green lounge chair is the indie. It has the high back screen, but again, we're combining it with the dart. So although it's a single user station and it's lounge, we're combining it with uh, a movable table. So we're expanding its function. So these single, these single zones can do more than just be a piece of lounge, you know, they're, they're docking with power, they're docking with mobile tables. So you're creating a, um, a zone that does more than just a single piece of furniture. It'd be interesting to see how much um, t uh, school children, school age children and teenagers end up using their public libraries a lot more with m more anticipated remote learning, right? Like if I were a teen and, you know, I've got to take my classes, some of my classes virtually, I would totally be here parked at that space, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great point. And it, it will be interesting to see, you know, how schools and public libraries, how, how they, you know, we know that they're working together and they have been working together, but how that might change uh, because public libraries are large spaces it allows naturally for more distancing. So. Um, if there's some harmonies there with some local school districts, how these spaces could be used to work together in some way. Right. Yeah. Oop. And that's the end. Oh my gosh. Um, this was so awesome to walk through. I, I love, I've always enjoyed listening to you share about, you know, your process and, and how you, um, how you think about design. And so, um, I guess I just, I was I'm curious to ask, um, as we as we wind down here, so with you know versatility being a, a, a very big focus right now, um, and of course all the trends of the of, of the recent um, years or so, what do you see as like the next thing? Like what do you what what do you what will we be talking about in a year or so? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I think you know I, I think if there's any pluses that come out of everything that we're going through currently. It's, um, you know, the promotion of digital collaboration. So I think in terms of, you know, how public libraries and how schools are, are going to start focusing more on how uh, physical collaboration face-to-face, -face, how that can be moved to the digital world and using digital collaboration and, and hope when we get to a point where we can all go back to being back to normal, you know, the skills and the pluses of um, digital collaboration, digital technology, and how public libraries can adjust their, their, public, uh, their public meeting, their community rooms to promote digital collaboration, how those learnings and skill sets will remain and add to, you know, our, our normal state. So we'll have, um, I think we might have a, a a, a strong and a return to physical collaboration, but improved mm. by building in digital collaboration. Yeah. Um, to, to, to make it better than, 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 than and improved. So yeah. I, I, I'm not quite sure what, how that will yield itself, but, and how that will affect spaces, but whether it's um, spaces that include um, and promote digital collaboration as part of physical collaboration. I think that might be something that we see in the future. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really positive note to close on. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing everything uh, with us today and um, always a pleasure to chat with you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, great, Jackie, yeah, thank you. Take care, talk to you soon. Thank you, bye.